Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper Vlog tutorial. I've got a custom action for you today, and this is to mimic the Pro Tools special paste function where it pastes to fill the selection. This is gonna be so helpful for pasting in room tone to fill gaps in your recordings. So I've got a Reaper project here, and I've got a uh, one track with some dialogue recorded onto it. And you can see that there's lots of noise in here. There's lots of mistakes and things. I haven't done any editing on this at all. Um, for the sake of this tutorial, just to speed things up, we're going to ignore the editorial part of it. And we'll just focus on this custom action that fills in some room tone. Uh, so let's get started with finding some good room tone. Typically, when you start a recording and you have this workflow in mind, you would um, record a few seconds of room tone, just quiet, sitting there, maybe hold your breath. Um, I've got lots of noise in here. I'm breathing, I'm touching the keyboard and things like that, and it gets pretty noisy. But I think this is a good spot right here. And to check this, we're going to make sure that our transport is in uh, loop playback. We're going to make a time selection around a quiet section of audio, and um, I'm going to put on headphones and turn up the volume pretty much to max. So it's plus 12 on this. OK, so that's not actually a good spot. All right, so we're going to find another spot. So let's say we're using this as our noise sample. Um, it loops fairly cleanly. We might want to do some things to make this even better. Um, but the, the basic thing is we're going to find a spot that has some noise. It just sounds like the room, just a silent room. And it's not complete digital silence because um, some devices don't really like that. Uh, like Bluetooth devices might actually shut off if there's more than uh, a second of, of of digital silence. So there's a spot and there's a spot. Let's take this one. I'm going to drag this down to its own track. And I'll just put this at the start of the project like that. So we've got this. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to run my custom action to fill in the gaps. And this is automatically going to um, paste this item and loop it to fill that selection. So that's what it looks like. It's filled in that silence um, within that selection. It's also put in a little crossfade at the beginning and end. So once you have that item copied, it's pretty quick to do a lot of cleanup, whether your selection is smaller or larger than your original item. So if if your noise sample is actually like five seconds, 10 seconds long, super quiet room tone, it's going to trim it back. So you don't need to worry about the pasted item going larger than your recording or anything like that. All right, so let's look at what this action does um, in the action list. Paste in selection, paste special, and fade. We're going to set ripple editing off just to prevent anything weird happening, because we want this to fill a gap, not move the gap over. I'm going to go to the start of the time selection. We will paste an item. It's going to trim that item to the selected area if it was longer. It's going to loop the selection of item, which is really helpful for item uh, noise samples that are shorter than our selection. We're going to go to the end of the selection. We're going to trim the right edge of items to add a cursor. So that's not going to do anything if the the item was longer, the pasted item was longer than your selection. For the items that are shorter, that's going to make it loop to the end of the time selection. Next, it's going to use the SWS action select next item across tracks, which should just be the next item on the same track. It's going to trim the left edge of item to edit cursor. So that fixes any gaps that would be created from trimming the item if that pasted item was too long. So just lots of little cleanup things happening in here, but it all happens instantaneously. And now it's going to go back to that pasted item, and it's going to grow the left edge um, and grow the right edge, which is that fade. 
and the actual fade length is pretty short. If you wanted a very specific amount of, of space or overlap, you can customize that as well. So instead of using grow left edge of items, you would do um, you would have to use a nudge uh, setting. So you would nudge left by saved number one and nudge right by save number one after you actually save those to be um, let's look that up. In the nudge set window, you would set nudge uh, left edge by, I don't know, 10 milliseconds. And then you just save this in your saved nudge settings. Going back to one other thing in here, I recommend putting that noise sample on its own track because it's easy to mute this and still find it easily. And once you copy it, you can, once you copy it, make sure you're on the right track and you can easily use that uh, to clean up your edits. I don't usually use room tone in my edits, but I think this is the best version of this sort of workflow uh, that I've seen. For audiobooks and film projects, I think this is going to be really helpful for you guys. Um, in my own video edits and podcasts, I usually don't use room tone. I just bring it all down to complete silence. And for me, that's a lot faster. But for certain projects, audiobooks, you really need um, room tone workflow. And I this is the best workflow that I've seen so far. I've, I've had a few different versions of this over the years, and it just hasn't worked very well. This is my favorite way of doing it now. So um, hopefully this is helpful for you. I'm going to put a download link to this in the description of the video and in the blog post uh, and also in the subscriber bundle. So if you want to try this out, you will need SWS extension. I think everyone should have that. Every use, Reaper user should have SWS extension installed. Um, but other than that, it's all set up for you. So you can just assign a keyboard shortcut to it and uh, get started. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter, support the Reaper blog through Patreon, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.